All right, guys, it is 7.07 in the morning. I am still disheveled and waking up, but there is some big news that just dropped from Jeff Passan regarding the Red Sox, Juan Soto, and Nick Pavetta. Um, we're going to just hop right into that, do some live reactions. I don't really have a whole lot of format set up to this. It's going to be a little bit less structured than some of the recent ones that I put out, but um, yeah, some big stuff. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so this tweet here is from Jeff Passan. It's saying that the Toronto Blue Jays had their first meeting this week with Juan Soto. The Boston Red Sox are next, and then the New York Mets, and then the New York Yankees. The Juan Soto sweepstakes is heating up. When you take this at face value, I've heard a lot of talk about the Red Sox connecting with Juan Soto this offseason. And honestly, since last year, there has been talk about Juan Soto linked to the Red Sox and possibly the Red Sox making a bid for him. But with all the crap that's gone on with this organization, you just don't believe it over and over again. John Heyman reported a few days ago, the Red Sox are very much involved with the Juan Soto sweepstakes. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, that's crap. There's no way, dude. Like the Red Sox have too many pressing needs this year. I know that they are really pressing the luxury tax. They haven't gone over it the last few years. And, you know, to some degree, you can kind of understand it. But as a fan, it's extremely frustrating to watch when you see like other teams going at it and the Red Sox have money. They just, they're not trying to go at it as much as they can. But one of the like things that have been in the background of this that I kind of just mentioned a bit ago has been that people from within the inside of the organization have been saying, hold on when Juan Soto is a free agent, if they can get him, things are going to go crazy. And it looks like there's there's some validity to that because just by taking this at face value, you've got four teams that are probably like the final four-ish teams here outside of the Dodgers, which you can also include into this. But I think those are the five teams here where you can be like, Juan Soto realistically could go to one of these five teams. Now, where would I put the Red Sox on that list? Fourth or fifth, probably. But we're not going to talk about like what the likelihood necessarily is, what would actually happen if the Red Sox got him. So before we jump into this next piece, just so you guys know, I do have my son sitting with me as per usual if you're new to the channel. Um, I try to do my best to keep him as quiet and edit out some of the babbling, but just so you know, that's what that is. So switching gears for just a second, I've been acting on the assumption all season that Nick Pavetta is going to accept the qualifying offer of $21 million from the Red Sox. And just by this report here from Jeff Passan, it looks like that Nick Pavetta actually is not going to accept the qualifying offer, which actually is a huge deal when it comes to the Red Sox offseason. And so when you're looking at how much money the Red Sox have heading into this next season, um, another thing that's also been super helpful just in doing research is this Twitter guy, Red Sox Payroll. So I don't know if you guys have heard of him before. He keeps track of all of the Red Sox payroll very well like methodically keeps track of it. And so he has this docu sheet here that kind of shows exactly where the Red Sox payroll is at for the next few seasons. And this year we're sitting at $175 million heading into 2025. And that leaves us about $66 million below the first luxury tax payroll. If we were going to give $21 million to Nick Pavetta, you can't get Juan Soto without going over the luxury tax. But if you do sign Juan Soto, I don't think you give a shit about the luxury tax anymore. That means that you're going all in now. And that means a lot of things change. You know, we, we need a right-handed bat for the middle of the lineup. Juan Soto can be your right-handed bat. And and yes, I know he's left-handed. That's not what I mean by that. What I mean is Juan Soto here has amazing splits when it comes to being able to bat versus left-handed hitters. He batted 278 with a 416 on base percentage, a 550 slugging, and a 966 OPS. That would be number one on the team, and he's left-handed. So you don't need to go after like a right-handed bat if you put Juan Soto right in between like Rafael Devers and Tristan Casas. Like it doesn't matter. You could have four or five lefties to start off the top of the lineup. You can't avoid Juan Soto. He's Juan Soto. And so, but what that also does is is where's Juan Soto gonna be? Is he comfortable with being in at, at DH part of the time? I mean, you could stick him there, but again, if you if the Red Sox realistically get Juan Soto, it's probably going to be for fifty million dollars at like fourteen years. I'm going to go ahead and say it's probably fourteen years, and I know that's kind of like a psychotic number to almost think about. But he's going to be 26 this next season, so if you give him a 14 year deal, that takes him through his age 39 season. These are this is this is crazy stuff to think about in reality, but. At the end of the day, if you give him a $700 million contract, you don't defer much of that money. Maybe you defer some of it. Like, this is going to open up all of the possibilities for you moving forward. It's, it's still going to impact the luxury tax for sure. But at the same time, you have more money to work with. 
So you get Juan Soto, well, what's next? Well, the Red Sox have a ton of pitching issues here. Um, this is kind of what the 26-man roster would look like if you had uh, Nick Pavetta still in the fold. Because I've been acting on the assumption he's going to be there, but you take out Nick Pavetta here, I mean, this is what your your rotation starts to look like. And that means that Chris Will is kind of forced into the rotation. You probably move Whitlock down here. He's probably going to have to go back into the rotation, at least for right now. And then I'm going to say we take Luis Guerrero and we put him back up here. So this is kind of what the roster would look like on opening day. You get Juan Soto, and Juan Soto's going to have to play the field. Like, he's probably not going to be your DH, but he can split some time there, which means that Abreu is easily the candidate that can that can go. You trade Abreu here, and when you're trading him, it's, it's going to be for pitching, and it's probably going to be for Garrett Crochet. Uh, because you are going to be able to sign all of these big pitchers. You're going to have to trade for some people. So you trade Abreu, you get Garrett Crochet. Um, you are probably also, and I know this is crazy, you're probably also going to be looking to trade Roman Anthony here. And the reason that I say that is because he just doesn't have space in the roster anymore. But at the same time, I am a huge Roman Anthony fanboy. If you get Juan Soto, Anthony can go. Like, he's the number one overall prospect in baseball you can get rid of Anthony. It's okay. Like, if you've got Jaron Duran, Rafaela, and Juan Soto in the outfield, Anthony can go. And I know some of you guys are going to be like, well, why don't you just get rid of Rafaela? One, you've already extended him. Two, you need, like, a defensive guy in the outfield and center field. You need somebody who's going to be great. And while Anthony could be great, Rafaela can be elite. And the most important thing with this, he's right-handed. And I know I just said that it didn't matter with Juan Soto being left-handed, yeah, you, you still do need some left-right balance, and you don't want all three of your starting outfielders to be left-handed when you already have guys like Casas, Devers, and now Juan Soto, who are going to be there, and Jaron Duran. Like, you got to get some righties in the lineup, which means that Anthony's probably going to have to get traded. But if you trade Roman Anthony, you're going to get some good assets back. You're going to get something better than Garrett Crochet back. And so this is where the offseason really starts to get interesting, guys. Like, if the Red Sox sign Juan Soto which I would imagine is probably going to happen sometime in December if the contract goes pen to paper. You can probably trade for Garrett Crochet around that same time. So say by the end of this year, you got Garrett Crochet and you've also signed Juan Soto. Well, there's one more pitcher out there that the Red Sox could afford that would change everything. And I think it would I think it'd be very realistic to get at this point because of all the moves that you've made. And, and I think that he'd be very interested in coming here because of all the moves that you've made this offseason. And that would be Roki Sasaki. Now, Sasaki's not going to cost you anything because it's kind of like what Shohei Otani got. He's coming over before he's able to get like a major contract. And I know I haven't talked about him much on this channel, but you're going to get Sasaki for like the league minimum, essentially. Like he's going to be able to get some international bonus money, but his, his contract's going to be small. And so if you get Sasaki, if you get Crochet, if you get Juan Soto, Holy crap, man. All you need is a closer at this point. And the Red Sox are like legitimate playoff contenders, maybe even like World Series contenders. Like you go like a snap, like instantly. And that would be a legendary offseason if the Red Sox are able to pull this off. Now, are they going to be able to pull it off? I don't think so. <laughs> but at the same time, you see where the domino effect can come from. You see where... Craig Breslow and the front office's mind is, especially if you have Jeff Passan out here reporting that the Red Sox are actually involved in this. Jeff Passan's one of those few guys where you almost implicitly trust when he's coming from this. And if the Red Sox are meeting with Juan Soto, again, I still give it a five, maybe 10% chance on the high end that the Red Sox are actually able to pull this off. But you look at that five and 10% chance, and as a Red Sox fan, and as a fan who's endured and struggled through all of the bullshit we had to deal with the past couple of seasons which i know sounds so whiny to a team and to a fan base that won the world series like six years ago but it's been pretty miserable to have to watch this team do nothing the past couple of years if you can pull all of this off the red sox legitimately could win the world series here next season that their window starts now it doesn't wait until these guys come up it starts now you have these prospects to trade and you build up this farm system to be able to make splashes like this and Juan Soto's do not come around that often so if you've got a shot for it you go for it you take your shot and if you sink it everything changes for this organization from here on out
Anyway, guys, I just want to get a quick report out on this video. It was some crazy news that had come through, so I just I had to make a video really fast on this. I will maybe do like a more in-depth type video here in the next like few days talking about this and what actually it could mean. My name is Ryan, for those of you that don't know. And if you guys are interested, leave some comments in the section. You know, I have a lot of conversation with people who leave comments, and I'm very interested in having that conversation with you guys. So anyway, thank you again. I will see you next time. Bye.